So this reason is, uh, this session is about one of the reasons why we do what we do. So why would, should we offer a global ledger that's accessible and neutral for all parties to enjoy? Well, first of all, we have global coverage, so we can now access our financial service or can offer our financial service to those entities or persons that need it most. In this case, that would be the unbanked, people who don't have access to the monetary tools that you and I might enjoy in uh, the more developed countries. They don't have access to insurances, uh, they don't have access to credit, they can't build businesses on their own, and eventually need to resort to other means, uh, which we of course will explain later on. So the unbanked, who they are and what their reasons are, you can find in the slides as well as in the literature. To sum it up, it's mainly uh, focused on the males between, or the main part of the categories are male and are between 15 and 35-ish. Do note that the total population of unbanked officially is 1.7 billion. So 1.7 billion percent is unbanked who don't have access to uh, the monetary system or monetary financial products. But that's not the entire picture because they only measured the head of households. So they don't measure uh, wives, for example. So females are measured. I'm not entirely sure, so check me on that fact. And they don't measure children uh, neither. So it's a huge, huge part of the population that don't have access to the monetary systems that uh, we use, for example, here in the Netherlands. Hard to imagine, but reality. They do use other forms, as you will see later on, and might be using different forms in the future. Hence the terminology frog leap, which means that they can frog leap like a jump uh, over an entirely phase of, in this case, the banking system. So they would skip the entire banking uh, system and would move from a cash-based system to decentralized monetary systems, skipping the centralized banking system in this case, that we enjoyed for several hundred years. If you think that won't happen, well, that happened many times before in less developed countries. Think, for example, uh, mobile uh, or landlines, like for uh, phone lines. Um, a, lot, a lot of time, African countries, for example, didn't have any landlines for phones, so they never had um, fixed, fixed phones, only mobile phones, which currently have a near 100% coverage, mobile phones, but that's in this session. So the reason why the unbanked uh, don't have banks, you can find as mentioned in the literature, are for example, they don't have the money or they don't have see the reasons to use it because they can suffice uh, perfectly fine without. Uh, they don't trust the, the banks or technology or it's too expensive. Uh, religion comes into place, culture comes into place, uh, belief systems and such. So what is the role of the banks then in those countries? Well, it's very limited scalability. So they have a very thin uh, coverage because not only, it's a bit of a chicken and egg story here. Because they don't, because they have a limited scalability, people can't access their services and because they can't access their services, they can't grow their companies and because they can't grow their companies, there's not sufficient funds for banks to get the, the fees and such and get the users. Hence, they pulled off their hands and it's, it's very, very limited in certain uh, regions. Um, also, partly some practical reasons, like for example, um, users can't um, abide by the rules that are needed from banks, like for example, the KYC, the Know Your Customer procedure. Sometimes people don't have an identity or a passport number because they don't have a passport. And without a passport, it's currently un, uh, it's not possible to create a bank account in current monetary system, which of course would be possible in a decentralized neutral system. Hence benefit and downside, of course, of these systems. Whether it's a good thing to know all your entities in a monetary system or not, that's, uh, well, Andreas Antonopoulos had a very interesting video about that, about a golden cage that the banking system created for their own, and that uh, financial monitoring of transactions to prevent uh, money laundering is just an illusion, as you are currently seeing and witnessing because of the huge amount of money that is getting laundered in current systems. Actually, if you want to do some money laundering, and that I agree with him as well, it, you just need a banking license. That's uh, the, the short version of his story. Other than that, the roles of banks is limited. That doesn't mean that other companies or organizations aren't 
um, offering services. Hence, what happened? Telecommunication companies joined in. So banks stepped down and telecommunication companies stepped in. So what did they do? You used to have like text messaging on your uh, previous mobile phones, uh, the versions without the internet, and you could send the text message from one phone to the other phone, to the other phone. Can't believe it that I'm actually needing to uh, need to explain this, but a new generation uh, watching these videos. But the text SMSing and such um, could also hold or transfer nowadays some sort of value. So your bank account is just a prepaid card that you use and if you send money you could send like phone uh, money or how do you say it a phone credit from one phone like calling minutes i could call you for 100 minutes and um, i could transfer those calling minutes those phone minutes to another uh, phone just by sending a text hence those phone minutes eventually turned into real money or actually uh, something that the entire community valued just like cigarettes in a prison for example in their case the, the amount of phone minutes, the amount of minutes you could so call somebody, you could exchange and you could actually pay with that money in stores. So an interesting uh, project in that regard would be M-Pesa. Just look it up. And uh, it's also in the... Uh, this is just phone money or phone minutes used as money in many different countries in Africa, for example. So. This is where telecommunication companies replace the banks. In other words, they can create money. In other words, they can create as many minutes as you would like, as long as you buy them from them in a serve of any other, uh, like national currency and such. And this provided eventually to be more stable than, a. Hey, well, they had more reach than the, the bank banks, and they were even more stable than some of the national currencies. Hence, people were using more and more of these phone minutes because the monetary policy of these communication companies was better than their, the policy of their own countries. So strange situation, but very good uh, example of how inventive people can be when uh, figuring out new ways to transfer value. Of course, this is also a centralized version. So still, the same risk apply to uh, the banking systems as well, I'm not entirely sure if it's still um, if you know to uh, if you need to know your customers and stuff. I don't think you need to have a passport and such to do this. You can have anonymous SIM cards in uh, in African countries. Nowadays, this is getting more complicated. In, uh, for example, the Netherlands, every SIM card needs to be re registered at uh, at an identity. So in the Netherlands, you still need to have an identity and passport to uh, to do something like this. Of course, we don't need it because we have banks, in this case, other centralized institutes covering our market. But this enabled digital money transfer where money were phone minutes. Very interesting. And as mentioned, nearly 100% mobile phone coverage. Not entirely, of course, but mobile phones are everywhere. So that's, uh, of course, very much useful if you want to scale. Other than that, we also have the tech giants jumping in. For example, think about Facebook and its Libra coin. Um, currently, the internet hasn't spread across every uh, corner of the world. So not uh, a fully 100% coverage for the internet yet. But if we have internet, you could do either centralized solutions or decentralized solutions. Because uh, you can't send a Bitcoin to somebody who doesn't have internet in the, on the other side of the world. So you still need um, the infrastructure to be built. This infrastructure is built already, but the tech giants currently are trying to cover the world via internet. So for example, Google is launching Project Loon, which is, well in short, they're just, um, how do you say it? They're covering the world with uh, very, very big balloons that spread uh, Wi-Fi signals so that you could connect with those balloons. Facebook is doing something similar. Uh, I forgot the name. I think it's something like internet.org. Uh, uh, it's called, in, we, we will upload it in the literature. And instead of balloons, they use something like drones. But still the same concept, total coverage, and of course, um, enabling new users, new markets for them. And not to have a digital currency, but to use their initial form of uh, their application in Facebook. That would be Facebook and Google. That would be the search engine. And of course, Facebook, as mentioned before, not only 
is the social media company anymore. They also have their own native currency incorporated. So that's pretty much it about regarding um, the unbanked. And as you might have guessed already, this is one of the main reasons why people are very um, passionate about decentralized technology. Because if you apply this well, if you can enable these people to have access to certain types of financial tools, so a good payment system, settlement system, but also a good credit system where you um, can have peer-to-peer -peer, um, lending, for example, stuff like that. We will explain later on, like microfinance, uh, universal basic income and such. If you create equal access, you might be able to create equal chances, uh, enabling an entire society to upgrade their living standards as well, hence resulting in happier population and less migration, less possibly less uh, uh, hunger, etc., more sustainable development goals, SDGs and such. So, very important topic, all enabled uh, in our case by a decentralized ledger, but do know centralized ledgers are also trying to tackle the world. Hence, different philosophies once more. Do you want to have on a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized manner? Or do you want to have it via a centralized organization? Um, you know that debate already more uh, perhaps than you want to know. Um, anything else to add? No, covered it all. Let's skip to the microfinance where we will discuss how these unbanked people um, are banked, or in other words, how we unbank the banked. 